Yo guys, how's it going? We're back for another episode of our Newcastle career mode today. We're getting into this one by going straight into a training session and then also seeing Florian Lejeune is saying that he's fully reflect, uh, reflect, recovered from his uh, hip surgery or whatever it is that he went through back uh, when he got injured. So he is ready to be put back in the squad for this game that we are coming up to now, which... Uh, at the end of the day, I don't want to bring him back too quickly, but we might as well give him a chance at some point. And he seemed to be playing quite well before he went into that um, injury, so yeah, why not give him a chance? But here you see, we do come into our first game of today's episode against Manchester United today, here at St. J St. James's Park, where we're hoping to try and carry on. Uh, not try and carry on because I didn't think in the last episode or so we've really played very well to be honest so we're trying to sort of give itself a bit of a bounce back after that uh, couple of poor performances in the last episode so hopefully we can try and get ourselves back into it as you see Florian Lejeune is back into the starting 11 and pretty much a standard starting 11 for us to be fair we haven't really uh, adventured very far it's literally just Lejeune that's been changed into the squad for this game didn't want to really change too much around obviously Manchester United not a team to be sniffed at so as you see here they haven't really changed their squad either which is quite surprising because when you seem to face quite bigger sides in these um in these games early on in the season they seem to put out quite a weak side which they don't seem to have done that to be fair so well done to them but uh, they have got Shaw on the bench which I noticed which is probably a bit of a downgrade for well Phil Jones and Chris Morning so you know um, he probably could have done the bo uh, job of both of them to be fair but as you see here in the 24th minute we tried to come forward on an attack of our own and they counter attacked us so quickly with Martial sliding the ball perfectly through the two centre or well, two of the three centre backs there straight into the path of Marcus Rashford who finds the back of the net to make it 1-0 with a beautiful chip to be fair as soon as he uh, as soon as that ball went through there, there was no chance of us even getting near Marcus Rashford. I had to bring the keeper out and it's a perfectly placed chip there. There was no way it, one or the other was going to happen. Either he was going to dig the keeper or he was going to he was going to finish one way or another. That's all I'm going to say. We couldn't really do anything about it. As soon as that ball had slide, uh, been slid through, Yedlin wasn't there. Obviously, he was further up the pitch on the attack and it just completely capitulated there and that isn't the way we wanted to start this episode or this game in general it wasn't good enough from the boys but we do come forward straight from kickoff trying to get ourselves into uh, an attacking position with uh, Yedlin trying to get, get forward here but getting completely taken out there from Paul Pogba who honestly I don't know why he went in for that challenge to be honest but he did and he completely mistimed it went over the ball and all sorts there and completely took out Yedlin as you'll see here he didn't get near the ball to be fair Yedlin took that touch just that minute too early well second too early shall I say and Pogba just came through <coughs> absolutely took him out and there's no question that it is a free kick and it is John Joe Shelby standing over it we were hoping to try and get ourselves a, a run of getting some free kicks in the back of the net, to be fair, because I'd quite like to score a few free kicks. I ain't really very good at it on normal. Obviously, they've changed the tactics now for the free kicks, so it's a little bit easier. But we see here, we do have a little bit of a have a, well, have a look at who we could have a, as a kick taker. But there wasn't really many players there that I wanted. So we did go for Shelby. It was in the red. But luckily for us, it was still on target. Caused uh, Romero some problems. But luckily for them, they did get the ball away. And it was still 1-0. And Jetro Willems does come forward in the 34th minute. Trying to attack and put some presence into the side. As uh, Joel Linton finds Almiron. Tries to find Joel Linton. It ends up sliding through to Phillips. Who then gets it to Yedlin. Who crosses the ball in. And I don't know how Almiron missed that head off, but he did do so, and it ended up going behind for a goal kick. As uh, Manchester United come forward again on another attack, 
trying to come forward. We got lucky there that Martial couldn't quite get his shot off as we come forward. It could have been Rashford, actually. I think it was Rashford. But we do come forward on an counter attack here with uh, DeAndre Yedlin using that pace down that right hand side. Again, causing problems to Paul Pogba. He gets inside, and that man again. It's them two men. They end up colliding and again it is Paul Pogba that takes out his man and this time in the box and this time to pick up another yellow card but also a red to go along with it. As you see here he completely missed times that tackle as well. I don't know what it was with Pogba in this game and tackling but he clearly wasn't getting along well with it and it does mean that we have a chance to level it literally on the stroke of half time. As soon as we take this penalty is the end of half. And we do try and bury it into that bottom right corner. It's Joel Linton and the curse of me not being able to take penalties on this game up until this point. Simply carries on, rumbles on, shall I say, as he finds the... <laughs> he manages to find somehow going past the post with an absolute shocking penalty. As... Uh, I don't know, we go into half time, it was just a shocking penalty, I don't understand how I did it so badly, but it did do so, and it does mean we go into half time in, uh, not in the lead, behind, so it's just not the way we wanted to start this episode at all, it wasn't a very good episode from us so far, and a very good game to be fair, we haven't really had a lot of chances, they had a lot of the ball but didn't really create a lot of chances, it was just a lot of nothing happening, to be fair, until the 78th minute, as you see there. Shelby getting a shot off, but it does fizzle past the post, and it doesn't really amount to anything else. And that is how the game ends. We do end up losing at home to Manchester United, who beat us 1-0. And obviously, this is the old side, because I started this literally when FIFA came out. So we have still got Alexis Sanchez, um, uh, Smalling, and Phil Jones at the club. And obviously Ashley Young now as well has also left. But as you see here, we are still in contention, hoping to try and pull ourselves back into just playing well again. Because as of yet, we're just not doing so. We need to be increasing a hell of a lot better because it's just not good enough from the boys right now. We need to be improving and we're not doing that because this is now three games in the uh, on I think it's three games where we haven't actually won a game, which uh, oh, we just hope we don't go in that to that kind of form. Because obviously we started the season off quite well after the first few games, I'd say. We didn't do too badly. But in these past few games, we've really started to struggle, I feel. And it's, like I say, it's just coming to that thing where I really hope it doesn't carry on. And if we, if it does, we're going to have to change formation. Obviously, I want to make this season as difficult as I possibly can and not just absolutely destroy everyone. But at the same time, you still want to be getting them wins of the belt. And we're not doing that right now. As we go into a couple of training sessions here, uh, as I think we had an international break at this point. As we go into these, we had a couple of lads going up. And then we also see Bailey got sold. And we had an injury there as well. Well, a player returning from injury, shall I say. And then we go into our third training session of this point as Jamal Lascelles comes into the boss and say uh, comes in towards and says that he's fully recovered from his uh, knee injury as well so we was hoping to get back into the squad and I'll definitely be using him because he is going to be a big part of this squad he is such a good player I really like using him he's quite a commanding player at the back and obviously having that leader trait really helps the squad boost the squad to get that little bit more out of them I feel as we go into the second and final game of today's episode, hopefully trying to get ourselves, like I say, back on winning ways against Wolves. And again, we are at St. James's Park for the second game running, which is quite cool. But, like I say, after three games now where we've not picked up any points, I don't think, and we were just hoping to get something out of this game, even if it wasn't a win. Just even picking up a point would have been good enough because Wolves are a very good side. I'll give them that. They are a very good side. It'll be a difficult team to come back against and actually manage to get anything out of the game, to be fair, let alone a win. So we were hoping for the best. Obviously, at being at home, it is a little bit more of an advantage, but Wolves have just got some players, you know, in that squad where it's literally... You could be dominating the game, but they could have that one moment of brilliance with one man. 
and it's the end of your <laughs> it's the end of your game and it that, them kind of teams really annoy me <laughs> because you can't do anything against them to try and break them down or whatever it's just so frustrating to play these kind of teams but literally a minute in or two minutes in for the boys we come forward as John Joe Shelby tries to break free he finds Almiron who tries to get inside here takes the shot and completely gets taken away I does it you know what I've just realized I literally don't know where that foul was conceded there he took the shot a player slid in to my knowledge he didn't touch him and we somehow got a foul here. Uh, if I was Wolves, I'd feel very, very hard done by by that um, by that challenge because I wouldn't say that that was a foul at all, personally. But you know, the ref has said what he has, and we ain't gonna <laughs> we ain't gonna shy away from a chance of taking the lead in maybe going into a bit of a bad run of form to be fair the John Joe Shelby again steps up this time he gets it in the green and this time he finds the back of the net for the second game in a row we've managed to get that free kick in pretty much the exact same space the exact same placement but uh, this time being it is green instead of red and obviously the first one was a challenging shot for Romero to save and he did well to do so even though it was in red that is a perfect shot there from Shelby, but unluckily for them, Ru uh, Patricio, I think it is, in goal, did get a finger to, to it, but obviously, you see, the ball does end up in the back of the net, and I am not complaining at all, and we are now in the lead as Joel Linton brings himself forward, takes the shot, and luckily for them, they managed to get the save this time. And it is still at 1-0. And like I was saying before, I would have felt so hard done by if I was Wolves right now. Obviously, conceding the free kick in the first place. And then having that uh, that free kick then conceded, that would be really pissing me off right about now. But they do try and bring themselves back in the game with Johnny breaking down this uh, left-hand side. As he finds Raul Jimenez. And what an effort that was, to be fair. Raul Jimenez, if that had ended up in the back of the net... There was no way I would have been pissed off about that goal going in. Because that was a, nearly a perfectly placed shot. He had a good amount of power on it. There was no way the keeper would get into that if it was on target. But luckily for us, it wasn't. And it sailed straight over the bar as they come forward again for another attack. It's Ruben Neves who finds Jota. Back to that man. It's into Jota. And like I said, that little bit of brilliance that they have. They have that uh, knack to just get one chance and put it in the back of the net with the two men up front obviously Diego Jota and also Raul Jimenez it's so difficult to defend against them they have such good players go, uh, coming forward and obviously in this game Adama Traore wasn't actually playing but honestly the pace and the power that they have coming forward is just so unrelenting that it's so difficult to defend against a lot of the time and they managed to find the back of the net here and draw them back level at the end of the day, like I said, I was happy to get a point out of this game, to be fair, because Wolves are a very good side. So, if we did manage to hold on, I would have been very happy. But, as you see here, we do come forward for an attack. It gets intercepted momentarily, but John Joe does win it back. It finds Almiron, who tries to take on his man, Miranda. He does so. He cuts back very nicely. Cuts inside, takes the shot. And Ru Patricio makes a very, very, very good save there. As he it was a deep it wasn't a very good effort there, but it was nearly very well placed because of the flow of the ball there. That made a very difficult save from Ru Patricio, but he managed just to make it. And just after that, we uh, try and come forward again, but it does get dispossessed as they come forward using that pace and power that I was on about with uh, Raul Jimenez here. Trying to get through, trying to take it round his man. He finds Johnny, obviously a player that has a lot of pace and a lot of skill. He tries to take it past his man. He does exactly that with a little bit of jiggery pokery. He finds Raul Jimenez. It's into Moutinho, who finds Doherty. They try and get into the box. It's a perfect chance. And what a tackle or an interception or whatever you want to call it. A block I'm going to go with. From that man, I'm not sure who it was. Is it Fabian Cher or Lascelles? I think it might have been Lascelles. Straight back from his injury. And being the captain that he is, gets in front of that shot with a perfectly timed slide tackle there. 
that was, it was looked like a certain goal. But luckily for us, it didn't end up being so, as Le Sells manages to clear the ball. And it does go out for a corner, but straight from that corner, we go up the other end and manage to find the back of the net. And Miguel Almiron makes it 2-1. And what a dramatic turn of events that was, from an absolutely unbelievable block at once end of the pitch to a perfectly placed to finish at the other one. Honestly... Is you, you don't actually see it in that clip. I really hope that you would uh, see it in the replay. Where the ball gets cleared. And he literally, Almiron, takes one touch. That is like, it's like a bad touch. But it isn't. It knocks it perfectly over the defender's head. Straight into the path of the man running on. Which is obviously that man, Ab, uh, Almiron. And he finds his sixth goal of the season. As soon as that ball went over that man's head, there was no way I was uh, spurring that chance. There was no chance at all that I was given any sort of <laughs> any sort of chance that I wasn't scoring that. I had to score it just to see that um, just to see that touch over and over again because it's such a, such a perfect touch. But they do come forward again trying to get themselves back into this game Di uh, Diego Jota as you see there uh, getting the shot off but Dabravka is is making does make the save there and it that is how the game ends we managed to win it 2-1 with I'd say uh, it was a hard fought victory I'll give it that it was a very hard fought victory uh, Almiron played very well obviously to find that goal at the end it was a perfectly placed it was just so good such a good counter attack it was perfect a perfect perfect one from Almiron and also John Joe Shelby with a perfectly placed free kick it was two very good goals from us and to be fair their goal wasn't half shabby either and um Lascelles was obviously getting talked about after making that block it, oh, if that if he didn't make that block then we was going 2-1 down instead we managed to make the block and ended up going 2-1 up straight from that corner which is just unbelievable to be fair and that is the kind of captain you need in the squad let's be honest he is the exact kind of captain you need in the squad and i couldn't be happier for the lad to be fair he played so well he was quite quite a solid defender in this game i've noticed in a couple of games where he hasn't really looked brilliant kind of say but at the end of the day he came out on top but we do have a conversation with Salat maxim in this game but that is the end of the episode if you have enjoyed please do leave a like subscribe if you are new and i'll catch you boys in the next one peace Skin girls put them hands in the air. Dark skin honey's pull drip. Do you dare? Valley girls trying to save me. Whoa. So let's meet them up at the gateway. Oh, all the hands up trying to lay me. Whoa. Lay the soy like a daisy. What? Getting kind of tired of the messages daily. Can't see what they're gaining. Everybody giving love and popping lock. Ain't even funny. Second product burning money. Shake it down. We getting bussy. Everybody wants something. Drugs and drinks is worth nothing. Set it up. Don't see it coming. This year's vision 2020. Put your mask up. Go again. Round three going up to base. She keeps